Hello again, and that, here I'm going to show you how to write a perfect a perfect post for a functional for your functional medicine website. Um, and I'm going to talk you through everything that I'm doing here, um, as far as creating this post, and giving you some ideas on how you can create uh, posts for your uh, for your uh, functional medicine website. So the important thing to remember is uh, if we look here are the things that are going to be important for you and who your target audience is. So most functional medicine practitioners have, a, have an area that they work in, okay, um, and they, they specialise. So your specialty is your services. The second, second part of a post is the location you service. So it's no good writing about things um, related to functional medicine if it's too broad. Okay, you can do that from time to time, but your main focus should be collecting a set of keywords for your for your practice that you want to rank in. And the best way to do that is by going to Google Search Console and make sure your your website's registered there, and then looking at where you're ranking under all those words in Google. So it'll tell you um, functional medicine Pasadena, um, a functional medicine practice Pasadena all these different words, and then what you do is you type those into the Google Search Console and you'll see if your site is anywhere in Google Search with, under those words. So you might you might create a spreadsheet of 20, 30 uh, search terms. They're called natural search, ter search terms. So uh, somebody is not going to type into Google functional medicine doctor. They're going to type in functional medicine doctor Pasadena, California. Um, Miami, Florida, Miami Beach, Florida, they're going to be specific because it's no good for them just typing in a general keyword, okay? So most people, not all, but most people do, the, do, do their searching this way. So my suggestion is, is that you write about um, these things as, as much as you possibly can um, and you include them in your... Um, you include them in your in your posts as often as you can. So writing about a, some, a, somebody who's come into your office, and I talk about this later, is is really good. Personal information. Now you can't give out their names and and stuff like that, but you can say Mary, thirty four, married with three children, lives in what you've you've got a suburb list that you service. Put the put the whatever suburb she lives in for, with a comma, and then followed by the state. Okay, and then the other thing is the conditions you treat. Okay, it might, it might be type two diabetes, it might be pre-diabetes. Okay, and then your treatments. So what services you provide? You should have a page for every one of your uh, services, um, if you can. I always suggest having an individual page with as much information on there, including an introduction video, all this sort of stuff. These are all important things. Keep the video short. Um, so you've got your treatments that you that you provide, which you, which basically are your, your your services, and then the outcomes. What what outcomes would somebody expect? The second part of it is be, is to become a fastidious note taker. That means every time you you have somebody in your office, uh, in your clinic, a patient, they'll always ask very similar questions. So when somebody asks a question, and if it's been repeated then that becomes something that you want to do a Q&A for, okay? So if somebody, if, if you have, uh, let's say, 100 uh, patients come into your office, what are the questions they always ask? Now, they're going to be questions that people ask, you know, if, 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 100, if 100 people come into your office and 30 people ask that question, then, then take that all the way out to the whole internet. How many other people, how many millions of people will have the same question, Okay. Because let's face it, you're a, you're a functional medicine practitioner and you service a certain area. However, the future for you may well be in consultations, advice and things like that that you do online. So all of a sudden, if you've got a bigger, greater audience of, you know, half a million um, subscribers to your YouTube channel, and then, then you'll find that you're, you know, 100,000, 20,000, 30,000, building it up all the time, then you'll find that you're going to get uh, consultations from all over the world. 
and you probably find that you'll end up be, you know, somebody in your clinic will end up be doing that full time, you know. And it, it's a good, it's it's good for it's good it's good for um, the population as a whole, and it's good for your business for for for, for making some money. Okay, so being a fastidious note taker is a really important thing. Another really important thing is is putting time aside each week to be able to write these things, okay? And I, and I write about this here. Set a strict time aside each week for doing a one-minute video or writing your articles and stuff like that, okay? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about one-minute videos now. So why short videos? Well, most people today have very short attention spans. Have a look at all the news sites out there. They all have little quick little things. Look at what everyone shares on YouTube, on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. They're all short little funny things, you know, because people basically have a, a minute here, a minute there. And, and the other really important thing about one minute videos is if it's under a minute, so if it's like 50, 55 to 50 to, to 60 seconds, you can answer a question, that, a frequently asked question for somebody, post it on all of, all of your different channels. So your YouTube, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, and people can read and watch them there, okay? And what I do is, uh, you know, I've got a, um, a great little video here from, from a young guy on how to actually make, uh, make a, um, with your phone, how to, how to do a vlog, which is a video log, okay? Um, and then I've got here is on how to search YouTube and Google effectively to get the information that you need. So you don't search. Um, sorry about that. A bit of noise coming. You don't search. Um, you don't search. You, you, when you search uh, Google and you search YouTube, the, the best thing to use is filters. Like in 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 Google, you'll use the time tool. Okay, and when you do a search, you'll see there's a little thing where you can actually filter the results by the most recent. And that's what you want. Like if you're looking for a camera or a phone, you don't want to get just general results. You want to get something that's recent. So some, some news or any, any type of news you're looking for, you want to get recent news. You don't want to get something from six months ago, 12 months ago, two, three years ago. Okay. So that's the same with anything. Um, so the same with YouTube search uh, most recent. Okay, YouTube does a pretty good, good job of promoting the most uh, popular ones in that search. But there's a little blog here on how to actually search uh, effectively. So when, when you're shooting a video, here are some real basics. Okay, keep it short when you first start. You know, because you're going to be spending a lot, you know, a lot of your time doing this. You don't want to be spending more, too much time doing the editing. So you want to keep them really short. And if you do a short video. Um, you can edit the video on your phone and then just um, and, and click to publish. You, you can pretty much do it straight away with ha hardly any editing. You'd just probably cut the first part and the, and the last part. And the, the video tools that are available for um, for for you uh, for your phone, iPhone or Android phone, they're all pretty good. Okay, um, probably best to do a bit of research and find out what the best little video editing app is. The easiest. And quickest video editing app is, um, and that video, the great, the, the, the great tutorials link here, will sh that talks about the ones you can use for the iPhone. That one. Always have a quiet space to do it in, so you don't want to have too much background noise. I'm right, I'm right next to a road here on one side, and the, I get noise mainly from garbage trucks coming, and it's really annoying. And sometimes I have to stop the video, like I did a few minutes ago, to uh, to restart it again. Uh, this this screen video. And another thing is always shoot in landscape mode. There's nothing more amateur than shooting in in portrait mode because it ends up you have two big black lines on either side of your video. So always shoot in landscape mode, and try to try to find a space that has good natural light because then you don't have to worry about things. And look at think about your background. Um, what is it that people are going to see? Um, and what is it that people are going to see? Um, what is it that people are going to see behind you when you're shooting this video? So try to get a nice space behind you. So once you actually learn how to do do videos, it should take you to shoot the video. 
uh, a Q&A, a, a one-minute Q&A, and then edit it. It should take you less than 10 minutes to be able to do that. Okay, one minute of the shooting. And if, if you, if once you learn how to do it, you'll learn how to stop, pause for, if you, if you screw up and you want to start again, just pause for a few seconds so you can have that pause in the video and then do it, start it again. And then once you finish the video, you can then edit the start and the finish of that video. Okay. So and then, now the next part is going to be how about creating a great post. Now here, I mentioned before about Mary. Okay, so here I've, I don't know if there's a city called Broadhurst in Virginia, but she lives in Broadhurst, Virginia. So we're talking about this woman, she's married, three kids, blah, blah, blah. And then she came to my clinic, you know, linked to your clinic internally, and she had all the symptoms of type 2 diabetes, which is one of the services that you provide. So you link to that page. And look, I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I don't, you know, I don't know about these things, but I just put a few things in there. And if you've got any pages that or posts that talk about these sort of things, you can link to those there. And then your nutrition team, you could probably link to your nutrition team. Okay. So what we're doing is we're talking about all these things. We're, we're trying to put all of these things into a post. Okay. So it's going to be relevant to the audience and it's going to be also relevant to you and the services you provide. Okay. So if it's type 2 diabetes, it might be other things that she also has. That she also has. So you write about those things. Now, I'm going to finish off this post a little bit. I've probably got a couple of paragraphs to go. But you'll see here with the Yoast SEO tool, okay, it, t it tells me everything I need to do. Now, I haven't got an image on this page. So what I do is I, I, I use a program called Canva, okay, and I've got a pre predetermined post okay so I've already set this up this is free if you, you can buy you can see here on the left there's ones that are free and there's ones that just have one that you use all the time okay and then I just change the text I'm going to, I always want it to fit in there. So I'm going to have to think about this a bit more here. Uh, perfect post for a functional medicine website. So what I'm going to have to do is just slightly bring down the, the size of this. Just going to leave that there. Okay, so now I want to find an image for this post. So what I do is I go to a website called Pexels. Okay, so they have some great posts. So I'm going to I'm going to think about uh, what do I want to show here. I'm going to I'm going to put type in computer. So here are all these computers come up. Now, I know that I've used a few of these before, so I'm going to think about this a little bit. I'm not sure what that says on there. Start, engine, stop. That's not too bad. So I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this 1920. I'm not going to go the full one because I don't want to... So I click download. And then what I do is I go back to the post... And here's my download. I rename the image. Okay. Then I click on featured image. Oops, sorry, I'm not ready to do that yet. Sorry. Hang on a second. Then I go up to my uploads here. Drop that in. Wait for it to load. I click on the background. Just because I want to get rid of that start engine stop. So there I've got the, the post. So I click download, JPEG. 
I'll move that one to the trash, I'm waiting for this to download. Usually takes a few seconds. Change the wording of that. Then what I do, actually I'm going to have to do it again. And the reason for that is my last one was a blue, so I'm going to change it to something I haven't. So I'm going to go with the pink. So under this, I can just click on this blue background and go to my pink. And then click download again, JPEG. And then what I'm going to do is change and put that in the trash. It's a picture of me and my motorbike on the Uni Salt Flats in Bolivia. Pretty cool, hey? Okay, now, perfect post. Go back to my post. Upload files. My caption and my uh, description, I have the same. My title and my alt text, I have the same. And, but I have these ones different, so they're different. Okay, set the featured image. Now, that's it. Now, this is going to be a video blog post, so I'm going to click on the video here, and I'll make sure the category is a, a, a thing. And then the, the, the final, one of the final things, not the final thing I do, so I'm going to create a excerpt. Okay, I'm going to hide... My, my, my theme that we've created here um, allows me to hide the sidebar and hide the footer. So if somebody's looking on their mobile device, uh, they don't see that. So it's not, they don't have to load everything. Okay, and then this one here allows, if somebody uses on their phone, clicks the back button, it goes back to my blog. Okay, so I've still got to finish the post off, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just check through everything. So with my tags, the only tags I use are words that I've used inside the post. I'm not going to use things that I, words I haven't used just because I think it's going to rank me. It'll rank you lower if you try that, you know. So I've got, you know, YouTube. I'm probably overdoing it a bit here. Um, but really, you should only have five to ten uh, uh, keywords in there, okay? So basically, then what I'll do is I'll look at everything, fine. Now, if you want to publish it in the future, I can put a new date on it, like the 11th, okay? And then it will be scheduled, okay? But I'm not going to do that. Um, so what's the date today is the 10th, so the 10th, uh, and I'm going to put it at, uh, it's, I'm going to have it at uh, 9 a.m. Now, really, probably 10.30 a.m. is a smarter time for my time zone, but it doesn't matter because I'm trying to, I, I, my business is all about um, clients all over the world. In fact, I, have, I, I talk to my clients all the time on the phone, but I, I've, I've very rarely met any of my clients uh, in person, and that's fine. But if you were local, that would be a local time. So you want to make sure you post between 10 and 12 a.m. and between 2 and uh, two and 4.30 p.m., okay, in the afternoon. They're the, they're the sort of premier times where people are sitting down and, and doing stuff. People don't do as much at night, uh, but... Uh, they still do it, but the, the big blocks of people re watching your website will be from those times. As long as you've got your time zone set up on your website, everything should work nicely. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just finish off this post, put a couple of extra paragraphs to finish it off, and I've pretty much done everything I need to do. I've got a nice little meta description in there. My readability is pretty good. Okay. Okay. Um, It'll actually inform you where, you where you've got it wrong. So if I click on that, it will show me where I've got it wrong. Okay. And that's pretty much all you really need to know is, how, you know, when you're writing a blog post is, is fit, 
getting all of those things that you want to rank for in there, but also making it readable for the user. You know, I mean, this is quite a good um, thing for me because I target functional medicine practices. They're the, they're, that's the majority of my clients, and I'm writing about them. I've got them in. I've got a, a H3 uh, tags with the with the with the um, with functional medicine practice. I've got all these sort of things covered. You know, it's telling me I don't have the focus keyword and hate such as H2, but I actually do. But I might just rejig this a little bit. Uh, to get it to, to get that one to be a green as well. So I've got all greens then. Um, it's sometimes it's very hard to get all greens as long as your your main thing is the green up there. That's the most important thing. But you try and get it, you try to cover all these sort of things. It takes a few minutes extra, but it's well worth it. Okay. So I'm just going to finish this article off. I hope it's been of some some help to you. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions or comments, just make sure you go to my contact page and contact me and I'll, I'll make a comment on this video and I'll be happy to answer it any time. Thank you and have a great day.